Um, so you said you have had some other kind of paranormal experiences. Would you like to comment on those? Well, I mean, just, just my whole life. Uh, we lived in a haunted house where I grew up in Arkansas and um, just had a whole, whole bunch of that stuff, even fairly malevolent stuff. We had a, a barn that was on our front property that the story was, the local legend was that somebody had killed his entire family out there. Uh, but the barn had fallen in and collapsed, and all we knew, we were raising geese at the time. And any time any of the geese went near it, we found them the next morning with their neck snapped. Yeah, um, that kind of stuff, but just, you know, uh, general spook stuff, ghost hunter stuff throughout my entire life. The, the big thing that set this apart was the size and the scope of it. I've, I've never felt that that much kind of, I don't, wanna, I don't necessarily know the power is the right word, the, but the power and the scope of it were beyond anything that I had experienced before. Yeah, that's comparable. Okay. All right, thanks. So if you just want to tell me a little bit about um, your experience and where you were when you were there, if you've had other experiences there, just uh, anything about yourself you think is relevant about your background. Okay. Well, I don't know what, what would actually be relevant about my background. Um, it would make me more credible, at least. But I, I have I have had you know paranormal experiences throughout my life. However, uh, in this particular location, we were in Cimarron Canyon State Park, New Mexico, and hiking up a trail called Clear Creek Trail, about halfway up the canyon. And we never really had experiences before then. Um, I mean, little spirit things here and there, but nothing. No, no real experiences like this. Uh, but yeah, we'd taken our, I think he was two at the time, our son, up the trail. And we were, we were just a little ways up. We weren't very far at all. And he started acting very weird. Uh, the first thing he did is he dropped, is he sat down in this, like, frantic man of, uh, meditation pose. That was abnormal for him. Yeah, very abnormal. I mean, he, he's never, he never even seen anything like that. Because even when we do meditation or whatever, we don't sit like that. And after a little while, he uh, jumped up and started talking about how we were late. How we, need to, how we need to get a move on because we were late. And it was just, it was out of the blue. I mean, this is a two-year-old. And, and it just came out of the blue. And we started and start up, and I think, uh, I think my wife was in front, and the kids were between us, and I was bringing up the rear. And I had this funny feeling, as we, after about five minutes probably, I started having this funny feeling, and I turned around, and I got this impression um, I can't really say it was, it was a physical, but it was like when you have that extra sense whenever you're used to psychic activity, that kind of thing, that, that extra sense, that the trees were closing in around the trail, but at the same time, like the trail was warping longer. You know, it, it, it was like there was this big spatial warp, I guess. Like the right. scene in the Lord of the Rings? Well, yeah, you, you know, uh, like the, sort of, yeah, the scene in Lord of the Rings where the hobbits um, are on the trail with the riders coming. Yeah, Fellowship but of the Rings. Another way, another way to describe it is... When you're ever watching Star Trek and the ship goes into warp, how it trunches and stretches, mm -hmm. it was it was kind of like, but like the trees were doing, like this big spatial, spatial thing. Um, and that's what you felt, kind of behind you. Mm -hmm. Did you feel anything like that at the same time? I did not feel anything like that with the with the change in the forest. Mine was all just a feeling of wrongness and that there was a huge amount of interest in our son. Okay, and you had no idea what this interest came from, just there was something maybe watching him? Yeah, watching him and eventually as we continued to move up the trail, it started to change from just an interest to a feeling of it was waiting for me to get far enough away from him. Yeah. It wanted him. Okay. Yeah, and at the time, we, we dismissed this because of uh, the place where we went to eat every morning that was right next to our hotel. There, we were talking about there had been a lot of mountain lion activity up there. And we had really just dismissed it as that. She was sensing a mountain lion or, or something like that. And then once we started learning more about some of these other cases, then I kind of the two clicked together. I never associated the two mm -hmm. until learning about some of these other cases. Like Missing 411, mm -hmm. David Politis. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
I mean, we definitely, after we started, I can't remember which of us commented first, but one of us commented mm -hmm. about having the strange sensations, and whenever we realized that we were both feeling stuff that wasn't good, Mm -hmm. We yep. turned around and, and left the train. And, and that, that was the special, the special thing because we both felt this because I hadn't told her what I felt before she started talking about her stuff. And I, and I felt mine first, so we weren't feeding off each other. It was independent. And um, <clears throat> had you been in that area before? Well, I've been up that trail hundreds of times. That's our favorite trail. Mm -hmm. That was the trail we'd always go to. We went up there on our there. Mm -hmm. and, and you never had anything comparable. Never in any... So you probably felt more or less if you've been there that many times just at home and it was a fun, maybe one of your favorite places to go mm -hmm. yeah. and never anything like that. Yeah, I, actually that trail is usually a place of kind of safety, a place that we would just really love to go and enjoy with the family, but mm -hmm. that was alarming. And so this trail, um, I believe you told me before... It goes, it, it follows along a creek exactly, or? Yeah, what, what it is, is there's two, they're, they're permanent creeks, but they were carved out by the snow runoff. Mm -hmm. And I think there, there's a spring somewhere up there. And sometimes it splits in two, sometimes it's one, but it comes down through a series of waterfalls. Okay. And, and that's, that's another thing, listening to some of those missing 401 cases that were brought to our attention, stuff like that, is, is the proximity of the water, and then also there was a lot of crystalline rock. I don't know if it was granite or whatever else, but there you could see the, the quartz and a lot of the rock, and that, that mm -hmm. seemed to have been another thing. But it was just weird that we'd never experienced anything like that before. I've been going up there my entire life. Yeah. Um, did, you had said that you had uh, maybe had some less, some more minor like spiritual activity there. You want to comment on that at all? It's typical, typical land spirit stuff. And, I, and like I said, I don't, know, I don't know who's going to be listening to this in the future, but it's one of those things that can make you sound a little crazy unless you've actually experienced them. But, okay. uh, yeah, our son, when he about the same time, even when he was a little bit younger, had a little playmate. Yeah, down, little, near, down near the bottom of the mountain. Down near the base. Yeah, okay. uh, he'd go up there, and he was just playing and having fun, and he was kind of, he wasn't old enough to talk yet, so, or at least not much, and so he would be gesturing or pointing, and it was like somebody else was there, and it sent up a very playful air, but, um, yeah, yeah he almost, like, had he kind of... Okay. She, she's, a, she's a lot better at sensing than I am, but... Every once in a while, you, you catch a sense they'd be following us up the trail as we'd be. And it, it was always real friendly or curious or, you know, a little bit of nervous energy. It wasn't anything like this. It wasn't was anything like, malicious right. or malevolent. And, no. not, not, not at all. And you felt a sense of this intention, both of you did. Were you able to pinpoint a direction, maybe just the trail behind you? For me, it was, it was certainly, it was coming up the trail behind us. I mean, I'm 100% certain on that on my end. For me, it didn't. It didn't feel that way. For me, it almost felt like it was. It was circling in on us, like it, it was evaluating, like going around us to try and evaluate the best way to get to him. Okay. It, it should also be stated too far away. That, that, sorry, it should also be stated that she started feeling this after I had already turned my back on what I was feeling. So it could have moved from what I was feeling to circle around us. I don't know. I, don't, I can't confirm or deny that. Do you know how, about how much time that there had passed from the minute you first started feeling this presence to the time you all decided to make a move, either get out of there or react to it, or about, about how long the encounter happened? It was probably... She started sensing it probably about two or three minutes after I did. And once she started saying that, we... We decided we needed to go uh, immediately at that point, and we turned around and left. Were there any other, um, besides the feeling, was there any kind of a visual distortion, sounds, smells, anything out of the ordinary? Like I said, it, it is, it is hard to differentiate a, a, psycho, a psychic impression from a visual one, so I can't, okay. I can't tell you that what I was seeing wasn't visual. Okay. Okay. I didn't experience any difference. It was just the sensation... I don't know, this overpowering feeling that my son was in trouble. Yeah, and that's a, that's a very real, uh, like, intuitive maternal instinct. Yeah, I mean, I mean that was, it was just alarming to me that I just, I absolutely could not leave him alone. 
that's the one thing that kept running through my head. Do not move too far away from him. Yeah. And so I could see how you would think, well, maybe it was just mountain lions or something like that. But yeah, and then we, then we start actually listening to these, these missing 401 cases and everything else, where the the kid wants a cookie and the mom gives him the truck keys and she turns around and grabs a bottle of water and turns back and the keys are laying in the dirt and he's gone, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it really started to kind of turn the wheels. Um, that area has a lot of those missing 411 cases. It's a pretty highly concentrated area. Maybe not as concentrated as, say, Yosemite, um, but it is a state park which to me basically says that's a guarantee that it will never be developed or really inhabited by a lot of humans. Um, it has a little bit of a reputation, at least in the indigenous uh, culture, about giants that live in the mountains that they still take seriously as a threat. Um, they may not be as prevalent as they once were for whatever reason, but I believe in that religion or that belief system, they know they'll come back whenever they're needed or something like that. So it has a lot of stories attached to it. Yeah, and see, we didn't know anything about these missing cases or anything else when this occurred. Yeah. We, we'd never heard of them. I never knew anything about it before, or I might have been a bit more cautious about going up through there. Right, absolutely, especially with your kids and everything. Um, had you ever felt anything like this in any other location at any other time that you can remember? No, I haven't. Okay. You know, the, the closest thing, it wasn't exactly like it. the closest thing is there was a a hard uh, thunderstorm coming in, you know, with a straight line shearing winds, and there's a, a kind of a wind funnel that comes through. But whenever that thing first blew in, and, and you see the the trees blow apart, and you, you just feel that energy or whatever you want to call it, that wind coming in, that had that it had a similar feeling. Was that in that same location, or was that no, somewhere else? No, this is out in our backyard. Okay. But it's, it's not, it wasn't the same, because this was 100% physical mm -hmm. in, the, in the backyard. But it was that same kind of raw energy. Okay. And there's a lot of energy in thunderstorms, too, besides the wind. There's, mm -hmm. you know, the the supercharged air, you know, the lightning, everything like that, ozone, so. Yeah, that. whenever you, whenever you see the, whenever you see it, you can see it coming, you just see the tree starting to lay over as it coming, as it's coming, that, it was that kind of, that kind of power. Wow, okay. All right, well, is there anything either of you would like to add, or uh, maybe let other people know if they have a similar experience? Yeah, if, if you sense anything like that, get gone. Go back to your car. That's don't 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 say oh I'm just being superstitious or I'm just being silly. No, go. Listen to your gut. Especially if you have a child who tends to see things that you don't necessarily see. You think maybe they're just having imaginary friends or they're just you know. It's easy to blow that kind of stuff off, but sometimes it means that they can see stuff that you can't. And it seems like a lot of these cases happen to people like that. They're attuned to people who can sense different energies, and so he's always had some of that ability, and that's part of the concerning. Um, one thing I, f I forgot to ask also is, uh, like, what time of year it was, what kind of weather it was. Oh, uh, this would have been May. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was sunny out. It wasn't hot. Yeah, May, sunny. There, there wasn't any inclement weather. Okay, no, no, no forecast or anything mm -hmm. like that. Just good hiking weather, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a little, little bit chilly, you know, May in the mountains, a little bit chilly, but no, it was perfect hiking weather. Was there any snow on the ground anywhere? No. Okay. Uh, very, very top mountain peaks, but not even on the range we were on. Okay. All right. Okay, well, thank you. Yep.